Good morning or good afternoon everyone, depending on where you are joining us from, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Garrett from Business Review, and I will be your host. It is our pleasure to have Flo Former with us today, who is presenting this webinar titled, How to Take the Fast Lane to Process Perfection. I would like to welcome you to our webinar platform on 24. You will notice that this webinar is browser-based, so if you do disconnect for any reason, please just click on the link that you received via email to rejoin the session. In order to ask questions, you can send them in via the questions widget. Just type them into the box at the top left-hand corner of your screen and click Submit. We will allocate some time at the end of the session to address any questions or thoughts that you may have. Please use the yellow Help widget if you require any assistance, and you can move, resize, and maximize any of the windows in front of you to get a better view of the slides. Today's guest speakers are James Morgan. James is the IT manager of the A14 Cambridge to Huntingdon Improvement Scheme which is the largest road construction project in the UK. A 1.5 billion joint venture between Costain, Skanska, Belfort BT. James is here as a Flow former customer today to show how this team took the fast road to process perfection. We also have joining us Paul Stone. Paul is the go-to product expert at Flowformer. Paul works closely with Flowformer's US and UK clients and is dedicated to empowering business managers to automate process smarter without any coding required. Over the next 60 minutes, James will share insights into the process challenges the A14 faced and how they overcame these with the no-code process automation tool. Then I'll invite Paul to quickly show you how easy it is to use the Flowformer process automation tool. And then after, we will have a Q&A session at the end. But for now, allow me to welcome James. Afternoon, everyone, or good morning. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, cover how on the A14 we've implemented Flowformer over the, probably the last uh, two years, I suppose, we've been using the product. Uh, if I give you a quick overview, overview of um, the scheme itself, so as previously mentioned, it's the largest construction project in the UK, uh, around one and a half billion pounds. It's quite an interesting job. It's uh, 31 kilometres long, um, offline and online work. So some of the work is working on the road that's already in place and other that is creating new works through uh, a greenfield site. Um, at peak, we were running at about 2,500 people on staff, so that's back office people and also construction workers. Um, so you can imagine on that side, type of scheme is quite uh, a challenge in terms of logistics and our office setup and so forth. We've got uh, three main compounds that cater for around about 750 users and then satellite sites that the other guys are based on out on site. Um, my role is heading up uh, the IT department. There's around six of us on site at any given time from DBAs, BAs, and general day-to-day -day IT support. In terms of um, what we've been looking at for uh, business drivers as to what we were looking for a product, um, you can imagine, as I said earlier on, it's uh, a large scheme. We've got a number of offices, including the main offices, uh, one of the key, th key themes was basically to make sure we captured data accurately um, and that we actually had a view of what was going on. Also, the construction industry is quite, um, I suppose, archaic in some of their approaches to the way that people work with data. Um, there's quite a love of Excel and lots of local uncontrolled data and processes. <clears throat> so it's not to say that people weren't completing processes in line with the way that they should be done as from the management system but it's more around the fact that we wouldn't actually have sight of that information to be able to capture it. I suppose one of the other key elements is being able to control data sets. So we have known things like bridge structures that are tied into our work breakdown structure. So accurately recording that um, everybody's working and saying the same information when they're completing forms. In terms of uh, pain points, so again, uh, manual processes, we bought a lot of processes from the different parent organizations into the joint venture, um, generally generating an excessive amount of paperwork. So some of the things we do, like our procurement process was all paper-based and would be relying upon documents being passed from person to person across an office, left on desks, that sort of thing. 31-kilometer um, job, so obviously we have people all over the place at any given moment in time. We may have someone has to approve something that's in a different location. So obviously quite difficult with that distributed workforce and again logistical challenges. Um, poor governance I think was probably quite an issue. Um, we were obviously not able to see processes end-to-end -end and see where something could possibly stalled throughout its given life cycle. 
So being paper-based, that was quite a, a challenge. Um, and also the nature of using the paper-based solution. Um, people having to go and print out information, attach it, staple it to a document, and then hand it on. So we were basically looking for a solution that we could maybe automate more of these processes and get some line of sight of the information that was generated. Um, some of the processes that we've automated, I won't go through all of them, but uh, we have a, a permission to dig. So on site, on a day-to-day uh, -day basis, the chaps will have to uh, nominate areas of work that they're going to basically dig, um, and there could be utility services in there. Previously, that was quite a complicated process that involved passing paperwork from person to person and attaching drawings. Using Flowformer, we've now automated that process. Other things, the labour request, we obviously use a lot of labour that comes from third parties on site. Um, so we've automated a process whereby all of that requisition of labour is now done using Flowformer. The approval process is done. Uh, we have it all tied into Power BI so that we can actually see what's going on, where, where recruitment is within that process as well. Um, and another good example, which is using um, a third party, sorry, an external element of Flowformer, is the weekly supply chain data submission. So using that process, we can go and contact our supply chain, and on a Friday, they submit stats that enable us to produce information back to our end client. So the number there, we're actually running at about 34 processes at the moment. Um, one of the key things, I suppose, around those processes is, is the visibility of the data that we capture and then also the reduction in effort when it comes to actually automating those processes. In terms of governance, rather than having um, the processes exist in their own ecosystem outside of any control, we have them all tied off of our management system. So in my mind, that's quite key to the success of implementing this. We have one area that people go to to be able to access a process. Everybody knows it's there. Um, we don't send them around by links. Everybody knows to go to one place and they can guarantee that they're getting the latest version of any process. Um, that at the moment contains around 400 processes. So obviously we have a long way to go if we're trying to automate all of those processes. But what we've done is try to automate those that are high value. Um, we continually have the business coming back to us and asking for further information and further processes to be automated. So I'll give you an example of a couple of processes that we've worked through, um, one of which was a requisition process. This was um, previously based on SharePoint, um, which was controlled by my department within IT. Um, it's quite a complex process with a number of different levels of approval. We have commercial approval and finance approval. Um, construction managers have to approve certain jobs and certain tasks as well. One of the key elements of that was the visibility previously. Um, the data that we were retrieving back out of SharePoint wasn't particularly great. We had a slight problem around visibility. And also, because it was controlled by us within IT, we only actually had, in terms of resource, one SharePoint developer. So changes to this process and other processes were obviously um, causing us issues. Um, so using Flowformer, we've managed to take that more back out into the business. Um, the business now control it, and my team now just over oversight of that process to make sure that things are correct before it's released into life. So it's made quite a significant difference in terms of the ability of the scheme to be able to forecast consumption of, say, materials that are going to be used over a three-month period. And then using the requisition system, they can actually draw down against that information and Power BI provides them with a relatively accurate report of that data, which they simply wouldn't have had previously. Um, that's an example of the screen for the requisition process. So again, you can see it's relatively straightforward. Um, there are steps within there, which are the boxes along the top. But when, a, when they're completed, it passes between those different steps. And there are certain conditions that we've put within Flowformer that hide elements of that process, depending upon what, what item is being requested by the end user. So it's very straightforward, it's nice and clean and tidy, and very easy for the users to understand and comprehend the information that they've got to fill in. Some of it's mandatory and some of it's not. Um, in terms of reporting, as I said, all of our um, processes and flows that we've generated tie into Power BI. Um, we're very heavy users of Power BI. Um, and it gives us great visibility of where things are within a flow, what stage they're at. Um, whether we have problems with 
actual close out of processes we'll see where things and items are actually stalling plus an overarching view of the number so you can see on there when this slide was taken a few months ago we'd raised over 11,000 requisitions the system is key it's used by several hundred people across the job on a daily basis so it's uh, integral to the way that we operate and work uh, another key system that we've taken is targeted risk monitoring it's a field-based inspection form the previous incarnation of this was a excel spreadsheet um that had 63 tabs on it um it was quite difficult to use and to operate um and obviously individuals would take that spreadsheet and go from work and then somebody would have the admin task of amalgamating that data at the end we've now replaced that with a flow form of flow um which is brilliant it has the ability for us to use it online so that guys can now take this out on site they're reporting the information back using the tablets out in the field, which means it's going back to one central repository. The questions that are asked are defined within the database, so very easy for us to change those questions and vary on a month-by-month -month basis, should we wish to. And also, as I mentioned previously, we're working on a, a large linear scheme of 31 kilometres long, so connectivity can sometimes be an issue. Um, we have the ability, using Flowformer on the tablet devices, to use it offline, and then sync that information when we get back in the office. So that's, that's had a significant change to the way that the guys work um, and some good efficiencies in terms of extracting that data when it's raised in the field and then feeding it into other systems, whereas normally that would manually have to be transcribed by someone. The permit to dig, which I mentioned earlier on, um, probably our biggest process to date, I would imagine. Um, it's generated some significant efficiencies for us as a, as a joint venture. Um, this has taken away a lot of admin overhead in terms of uh, capture of data and the processing of completed forms. Previously, we used to find we'd have several hundred of these left at the end of the month that then would have to be scanned in by someone and filed, and that has now gone away. We now have visibility. We're able, able to capture that information electronically. And, and again, that reports into a dashboard, so pretty much within about a month, month and a half of this being up and running, one of the key things that we were able to identify was the closure of permits. Um, this has made that visibility brilliant, so we can now see where these permits are being raised, when they're being fulfilled, whether they've been completed. So the visibility for us in terms of data has made a fantastic difference. Um, where are we with Flowform on our journey and our next steps? So when we initially set out back in 2016, we were quite keen to find a tool that we could use that basically wasn't an IT-led tool, something that we could hand over to the business and the business could own. Um, our resource is very much, if anyone was generating any form of processes, we wanted to be able to capture that data and have sight of that data and then tie that into our reporting platform being Power BI, just to make sure we had consistency of data and accuracy of the information that's captured. Um, quite a big drive as well to reduce the overhead when dealing with paper. So printing costs conventionally on a construction job can be quite high. People like to print out uh, numerous copies of Excel spreadsheets, reports and processes. So anything we could do to reduce, reduce the amount of printing on jobs is quite a significant saving. Um, and also visibility of where the processes are being used. So publishing on our management system, um, only accepting inputs to processes when they are actually completed electronically <clears throat> and very keen because we have a small IT department and we'd experienced some pain previously with SharePoint development to have something that was minimal coding so moving away from conventional tools that maybe require a developer or a DBA to action looking for something that could actually be used by our business and we did look at um, a number of processes over probably about an eight or nine month process um, and settled on flow former. Um, I suppose one of the key elements for us was around the um, use of Office 365. So we set up our own A14 environment for Office 365 tenancy. So we needed something that integrated with that. Um, the ability for offline, we did some assessments before we started the job, and it was fairly evident that we wouldn't be able to cover everything with Wi-Fi or have 3G signals in place. So trying to find something that actually had a tool that enabled us to work offline where we needed to was quite essential to that. Um, obviously, we started off with a 30-day free trial from Flowformer, so 
that was able to give myself and a couple of my colleagues a good idea of what we'd be able to do and introduce some of the concepts to the business and get a bit of a feel for things before we actually um, committed. And I think with Flowformer, we actually did undertake a trial of setting up um, the first pass of the permitted it just to get a flavour for it and see how well that settled with the business. So I think probably within a space of about six or eight weeks, we kind of realised that uh, Flowformer was going to meet our needs and tick most of the boxes for what we were looking for in terms of product. Um, we, as, a, as an organisation from Flowformer point of view, we started off with a short start. So we had an onboarding process where we had five of us in a room and we had some training for three days, which really helped. Um, we had some good manuals help to embed the process into people's minds and the way that the system operates. We've also taken the software advisory port, so support side, so we get three hours a month where if we get completely stuck with something or just want to chat something through, then we can book some time with the experts from Flowformer and use that time to help us move forward. Um, I think one of the key things is our UAT environment. So we have a relatively small UAT environment, 25 users. We tend to hand them out to the business as they're developing processes, remove them when they've finished. But that gives them the ability to try things within the UAT environment and obviously have no impact on live. Um, my team then act as the gatekeepers in terms of when something's been put forward in UAT and been developed, we'll test it and show it adheres to the standards that we've set before we push it out to live. We've also taken the data feed, which again we need for um, reporting, so that ties into our Power BI environment um, enables us to have access to all of the information. Um, we do an awful lot with Azure and data analytics as well um, and AI. So it means we can drag that um, flow former data and mash that data with other systems that we have in place at the moment. Um, and we're, well, the processes we're building from start to finish, we've done some very simple ones that we can do in a couple of hours to something like the permit to dig which probably took three or four weeks just due to the complexity of it and the amount of testing that we actually needed to undertake to um, put that in place. So where are we as a result? Um, faster processes save days. So we have captured and able to show that just by the, the fact that we're not moving paper around, um, we don't need to worry about people being on holiday so someone leaves a form on someone's desk and they're not in for a week. Um, we can identify that as part of the reporting, part of the system gives us the ability to put an out of office on. Um, the interface is what people expect now. It's clean, it's simple, it's very familiar to people. Um, we don't put lots of bells and whistles on there. It's just kept clean and tidy so that people can just see what they need to do and how they need to do it. It's certainly helped in terms of our integration and reporting. So as I said previously, we have now a number of Power BI reports. We run dashboards for the management team that roll up all of that information and we can do a lot more reporting by exception based on the information that comes out from Flowformer. Um, audit trail, key, obviously, to what we're doing. Um, we need to be able to go back and analyse where things have happened um, in the past. So we have all of that information to us as part of the processes within um, Flowformer. And accessible over mobile, so we have a number of processes that are used out in the field or even just simply in an office that people can access on the mobile platform with Flowformer. Um, all leads back, really, from our point of view, to that single source of truth, so accurate and timely capture of data and information. In terms of next steps, the joint venture is obviously um, a finite thing, and we'll start to decommission towards the back end of this year and into 2020. Um, we are still developing processes, and I see there's scope for us to develop more processes in terms of decommissioning and handover. The project has to be handed over to the end client and to a number of local authorities so we can extend and continue to use Flowformer to actually automate some of those processes. It also has a bit of a legacy because we can then hand that over to other clients that, or other schemes that are operating by our clients. So moving forward, they don't have to reinvent the wheel, that information is there. It's very simple for us to export and hand those flows over. Um, and this, I suppose, is where we're working with SIP and Highways England to look at what can we do with Flowformer and how can we almost set up a little bit of a community that means we can transpose and share good practice and flows between the different organisations and different projects and maintain a level of consistency. I'll hand over to you now, Paul.
Thanks, James. Uh, just to quickly introduce myself, I'm a product expert working at Flowforma. And today I'm going to go through a little bit of uh, the background of Flowforma and why it came into existence. I'll also go through a demonstration of the product itself, uh, talk a bit more about the broader features, that would have, some of which will be covered by James in his presentation, and then a little bit about our customer base and our coverage across the globe and so on. So to begin with, let's just have a look at uh, some background information. So Fulforma was uh, built because we saw that there was a problem in the marketplace, a challenge, and that was around business process management. A lot of traditional business process management systems were complex to implement and um, required a lot of specialist resources to deliver, um, to deliver a system into the, oper into the business. Um, and because of the long time to value, it was difficult to justify that um, investment and it basically uh, involved a lot of um, uh, difficulty in, in creating the uh, business case to, to uh, justify the investment in flow forma. So uh, business process management was a difficult area and um, it was always difficult to implement systems. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of a problem there with my slides. Thank you very much. So what we chose to do was to implement a system that was configurable by end users so that you could implement a system that was focused on digital process automation. So a digital process automation system is a system that can be built, uh, you can actually build out applications um, by business process owners or I, your local IT department, and that can be built quickly and delivered quickly into the organization. And you can take an alternative approach to building systems by using a prototyping method so that you can build, digitize your processes very quickly. It fits very well into uh, any digital transformation program where you want to digitize paper-based processes. They can be digitized quickly and deployed into the environment and they can be measured. It's so important to measure the results of your digitization efforts. And uh, by, by digitizing processes, you're recording metrics and those metrics can be used to further justify investment in a digital transformation program. So our solution is built as a simple solution to, um, to configure quickly, to be learned quickly by business process people. Um, and I'm talking about business process managers or process experts within your organization, uh, so that you can deliver processes quickly to your, to your end users. Now, before I go on to talk about the wider set of functionality within Flowforma, I'd like to give a quick demonstration of, of the system. So I'm just now going to uh, switch over to a screen share. Just bear with me one moment. Great. I believe, I believe everybody can see my screen now. So uh, I'll just start again, uh, just to say that what we're looking at now is an example of an instance of a process running in Flowforma. Now, what we're trying to do is onboard a new employee into the workforce. Um, the system represents a, a form that is shown in your browser, so it's accessible over the internet, or via our mobile app. And this form incorporates workflow and data capture in a single user interface. And it's so important that the uh, user is, is, can quickly adopt your solution. So there's no point in configuring a solution quickly in Flowforma if, you, if it's not adopted by the workflows. So this simple um, user interface presents the workflow and the data in the same screen. And what we're seeing here is a thing we call the step bar across the top, which shows you all the steps in the workflow and currently we can see that we're on the new hard details and as the workflow progresses the highlighted step will change and the steps may change themselves so the steps are dynamic and as you gather data through the workflow as it passes between one resource to another and so on and um, the new steps may be introduced uh, or steps may disappear the data then that you see below in this area of the screen represents the data that needs to be captured to complete the first step so what we're looking at here is the employee details and the details that can be entered are, are details of various different types. So we have uh, drop downs, we have uh, data, some of it's pre-populated and so on. And the idea is that the, sy the system guides the user um, through the capture of the data and all that data is uh, validated and stored securely in SharePoint. That's where what we use is our content database, uh, SharePoint, so all the data that's captured, all the documents that are associated with the workflow are saved in that uh, secure location. Now, when data is entered, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a submit button. When you press the submit button, the system automatically moves the workflow on to the next logical step. 
Now, ordinarily, that step would be assigned to a different resource. And of course, this window would close and the resource might get a message to say, hey, please uh, complete your task. And then they click on the, the link in the email and it opens up on um, their specific step. In this case, it's gone to employee manager review. The employee can now read uh, the information on the screen and accept or reject this new request that's come in. Um, and where's the request detail? Well, there, it's on the previous step. Um, so as you move through the workflow, you can see the data that's been captured in previous stages so that over time you build out a complete audit trail of all the activity um, that's been carried out to achieve this business goal. The form that you enter is dynamic, so I were to click reject, for example, the system will uh, ask me for a reason, and this, the workflow will automatically loop back to the uh, requester um, with some information about why I rejected this particular request. In this case, I can just accept. Um, I can enter in then some applications that I want the user to have uh, access to, for example, SAP, um, some details, and this information will ultimately be passed on to um, the um, IT team who can then set up access to these, these particular applications. So again, at the bottom you press submit and it automatically moves on to the next step. However, in this case, I've asked the system to just double check that the person pressing the submit button is, the, is indeed the resource that should be carrying out this work. So I'm able to enter in my credentials um, and confirm those credentials. And then this is all stamped on an audit trail. So as you're moving through the workflow, it's building up an audit trail of all the activity, uh, which resources are involved in this particular instance. Um, and uh, all the data, of course, that's captured in every single step is recorded in that, that, that transaction log as well. So this is the end user interface you're seeing here. Let me show you now what a configuration of that looks like. If I jump over onto a separate tab, we'll see here's our onboarding workflow in our configuration tool. A configuration tool is called the Flow Designer. The configuration tool is available to system administrators who can go in and create new uh, workflow templates, we call them flows, and can alter those flows um, depending on the business requirements that come in. So as business requirements change, it's very easy to modify templates to include, for example, new steps in a workflow or new data elements that need to be captured in different steps. In the flow designer, you can see many steps here highlighted in bold. And when I click on a step, I can see all the data elements that are captured inside it. Um, so as you move down here, we'll see there's a lot of different steps in this workflow to expand it out fully. A lot of data is captured as you move through this, this workflow. <clears throat> now, important to say as well is that the system is not just about executing steps or tasks and capturing data. It's also about carrying out automated actions. So for example, in this particular workflow, I generate a document. And the document is generating use, uses, using this thing here. We call it a business rule. And the business rule allows you to carry out an action. So when this particular step completes a uh, prepare welcome pack, it will generate a document using a, a template which uh, in incorporates data captured in this particular instance of the workflow into a document and generates it as a PDF. Now we have lots of different business rules of the system that carry out all sorts of automated actions. And essentially, this is um, assisting the uh, people involved in the workflow to complete their tasks tasks as quickly as possible. So um, what we're going to do now is just create a simple workflow from scratch just to show you how easy it is. The particular workflow you're looking at here with all of its business rules and all the data, etc., took about six hours to build, but we're going to build one in about five minutes. So let's go over to my next tab. And here I've uh, created a workflow called Customer Request. And what we're going to do is create a workflow with a few steps. To do so, I just click on plus step over here. And the very first step, I'm going to call a request. And I'm just going to save that. And it just adds the request step into the workflow. Uh, I'm going to complete uh, the workflow with a couple of additional steps. So we're going to say approval. And then I'm going to add in a step called fulfillment. Okay, so I now have three steps in my workflow, but I'm not capturing any data at the moment. So let's go to the request step and capture some information. To do that, I need to add in questions. So a question is our terminology for a, a data item or a field that you want to display on the form. And the first thing I'm going to ask is um, requester. 
So who's actually asking for this particular piece of information? And I'm going to say that that's a mandatory field, it's required. And here's the help text, please enter the name of the client. Okay, and we'll just save that. And now we're going to add in another question. So I might say um, type of request. And in this case, it's not a piece of text that I want to capture. I actually want to, the person to make a choice. So what I need to do is select the question type that I want to use. In this case, we'll use a choice question type. You notice that when I click on a different question type, the form changes so that it's relevant to that question type. In this case, I can enter in um, some choice values. So type a request, let's put it in urgent or standard. And let's make that a radio button. And now I'm going to put in another question for the request details. So in this case, we'll just capture in a, a box of details. I'll create that as multiple lines of text. So I want a, a paragraph, if you like, of information. And I'll save that. I'm now going to go on to the approval step. Now the approval will be carried out by a different resource. Um, and when, the, when they get that, uh, after that approval step, they're going to be asked, do they want to approve this request or not? So do you approve this request? And the particular question type is going to be yes or no. And we're going to make this mandatory, so they have to, to choose which one to go for. And then it moves on to fulfillment. So in the fulfillment step, I'm just going to add in a question, just to keep it simple for the demonstration, um, for completed on, completed on date. And then when I go to my selection here, I just select the, uh, the date question. And I'm going to default that to show the date only, and I want to default it to today. Okay, so basically, as you pick different question types, um, the parameters change down here. There's lots of different question types supported. And what we've done is we've built our own method of storing information in SharePoint, so we're not dependent on SharePoint data types. It's a very broad set of data types that we can support, including complex ideas like a repeating table, for example. So when you want to capture a, a table of information with lots of different columns, we use a system of uh, combining different questions together into a, a into to, a, uh, to be represented on the screen as a table. So even complex data, data types um, can be configured using this simple forms-based interface. Um, we also uh, integrate with other systems, of course, and we can integrate using um, question types. You can look up SharePoint list, for example. Again, when you select the uh, question type, it asks you what list you want to look up put the one, and you just pick it. Um, so really, it's a very much a no-code interface where you just configure the solution. So I'll just pop back onto my date and time here. I'll make that today and then show date only. Save. Okay, so that creates that uh, fulfillment step here. Uh, so the data in the fulfillment step. Now the only thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make that fulfillment step uh, disappear. So the fulfillment step is now going to be hidden by default. So when you open up a new form, you do not see fulfillment at all. And that's because you only fulfill if it's approved. So we're going to put in a business rule that actually shows the fulfillment step when the, uh, the user actually ap approves the, uh, the, the step to be completed. So what we'll put in here is hide show fulfillment step um, when the uh, answer to do you approve is yes. So if I go into approval here, equals yes, then show the fulfillment step. And that's my business rule. And that'll get executed whenever the person answers yes or no. And if it's yes, it, suddenly the fulfillment step will appear. Okay, so let's have a quick look now at what that, that uh, form actually looks like. Because I've configured it, I press save. It's now in the system, ready to go. And if I jump over here, I can see the actual um, step, the new form in action. So let me just open up a new form here, create new form. 
Now, I have a lot of forms in my system done by a standard demonstration system. So, ah, customer request, there it is right there at the top. So, this is it. So, a request and the mailing right and so on at the beginning because I can just go in and change very easily. So, it asked me for the requester. I can enter in some details here. Is the version or standard? My request details, I can enter here. And then I can submit and move it on. Now you notice there's no uh, third step in the process. That fulfillment step is not there. But when I click on yes, it uh, magically appears because basically it's, it's been approved. So now I can submit it on. Now in reality, all of these steps will be uh, dynamic so that the resource assigned to the step will vary depending on um, the step that you are on and the business rules that you put into the system. Now there's a very wide set of business rules that carry out all sorts of actions like sending emails, generating documents, um, and manipulating data in SharePoint, for example or passing data out to a SQL database or lots of, lots of uh, business rules that can carry out all sorts of automated actions that greatly boost the, boost the efficiency of the process. So uh, in a real life scenario, of course, your workflow would probably be a lot more complex than this simple example. But what this example shows you is how easy it is to get a prototype together that you can play back straight away to the end users that are going to use this system to achieve those efficiencies. And in this way, you can actually get a, get a system that people enjoy using and are going to use and uh, you're going to get results from. So your time to value is very low using Fulforma. Under normal circumstances, if, you, if this was being developed by an IT resource or an IT team or maybe an external partner, the time to actually deliver systems uh, would be much longer. And also the iterations to get those systems working efficiently Will be great, will be very large as well, uh, and there's a lot of cost associated with that too, and um, so it's expensive. However, with Fulforma, as you can see, it's very straightforward to use, and the whole idea really is to get those business people um, delivering IT solutions that uh, are used by the business very quickly, so that your return to uh, time to value is very low. Now, I'm just going to pop back to my presentation. Just a couple of slides left, and then I'll pass you on for Q and A. Okay, so just to talk now about the breadth of uh, Fulforma process automation. So I talked, uh, with the example I showed you was a very short demonstration. A full demonstration, by the way, lasts about one hour uh, and covers off a lot more breadth um, because the uh, application is built to be able to carry out things like reporting. It has dashboarding functionality. It has full governance. So if it's deployed in a large enterprise, you can actually deploy diff multiple different sites, um, some for um, business developers to actually build out uh, a prototype solutions and then for a uh, user acceptance testing and then for production or multi you can have multiple production sites and so on. So our governance application allows you to, to really implement Fulforma as a platform within larger organizations if that's what you need. Um, we also have uh, facilities that allow you to externalize your workflow so that you can have some steps in the workflow carried out by external resources, um, which is really useful for improving your customer experience. Um, you can integrate with supply chain as well um, and have your suppliers uh, pass information and documentation into your, into your environment. Um, just briefly then to finish, to talk about our customer base, we have a presence uh, around the globe and we also don't focus on any one particular uh, 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 vertical. So basically, James uh, has come from the construction area, and uh, construction and engineering is one of our focus areas, where an area we've had lots of success in. However, as you can see from this slide, and um, we've also succeeded in many other types of industries, including um, service industries and, uh, for example, food production industries and, and uh, drug uh, farm production industries as well. So thank you very much. I'm just going to pass back to Garod for uh, Q&A, if that's okay. Thank you very much, Paul. Just a reminder for the audience, in order to ask questions, you can send them in via the questions widget. Just type them into the box at the top left-hand corner of your screen and click Submit. We have a few in already. First question is, did you appoint someone to automate your processes how is it that you manage to get so many processes live so quickly? Um, yeah, to answer that one, yes, we did. So um, I have a business analyst in my team. So uh, he kind of took the lead and has been evangelizing the flow format, um, tends to hold a session with people that are interested in a particular process and working through with them and then obviously provide the training to them. 
Um, <clears throat> I suppose as part of Paul's demonstration, really, where we see the benefit is the fact that it enables us to create a concept of a paper-based process fairly quickly, which really helps with um, getting the understanding across to the end users or the business owners that are going to take that process forward. So, yes, we've, we've had someone appointed and that's made quite a difference, to be honest. Thank you very much. We have another question here for Paul. We're a little behind the curve in terms of our digital transformation journey. What would your tips be for getting started? Yeah, I think with digital transformation programs in general, they're very broad programs and uh, it can be difficult to um, implement tr true transformation and also to measure the success of the trans trans transformation. And I think the key thing is to focus on process. So if you focus on business process, uh, you're achieving business goals. And if you can do that in a measurable way, you can measure the success of your digital transformation. And one of the things we've had with our customers is that uh, a route to success is starting small. So start small and implement, let's say, digital transformation within a single department, uh, digitize processes, measure the effectiveness, effectiveness of the digitization, and use that uh, metric to actually drive dig uh, digital transformation across uh, your organization. So if I would sum up there, focus on process, um, do it yourself, and uh, measure results. Uh, really, they're the three key things that uh, we'd recommend for anybody on a digital transformation program. Thank you very much, Paul. James, the offline capability sounds intriguing. How exactly does that work? Um, it's very straightforward, to be honest. So um, once we've developed a process, um, the guys have the ability to download the Flowformer app onto their mobile devices, um, both Android and iOS. It works across both of them, um, or on a tablet device. And then they can simply select the process that they want to use when they're out in the field. Obviously, if it's picking up on 3G or 4G, then it will connect straight away, no problem at all. Um, if not, they've tapped and they've downloaded the forms that they're going to action. They simply action those when they're out in the field. If it's offline, they can complete the form, and then it syncs the data once it's back online again. So it's, um, it, it, it's a very familiar process because it's what they see with them in the office to a degree. The, the way that the form is presented is fairly similar, um, and the functionality of it is very straightforward. I mean, we've provided minimal training on that because people just understand it once they understand the product um, when they're using it in the office. So it's been a good feature for us. Thank you very much. Just a reminder, you guys can still submit questions via the Q&A widget in the top left-hand corner of your screen. I have another one here. Uh, Paul, I like the idea of enabling external people to participate in processes. Is that a big project? Uh, no, we provide a, a uh, uh, an option called so former engage, which allows you to integrate uh, external entities with uh, your your processes. So that basically, if you had a, um, for example, a a new supplier um, onboarding process where the new supplier had to submit some information, you can have the first step completed by the new supplier, and what you do is simply send them an email. They click on the link. They're able to go straight away in and enter in any supplier details that are necessary and documentation as well, and all that information then is passed into your secure environment in Office 365. Uh, to be processed through a workflow. Uh, and that's just a, a feature of Flowforma. We call it Flowforma Engage, and the more details of it would be available then on our website. Um, or if you, want a, if you want a demonstration, just uh, ping us an email. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. I have a question here for you, James. Did your team need to have any technical skills to automate and deploy processes with Flowforma? Um. I suppose it's um, open-ended question in some respects. So to Paul's point earlier on, you can extend the system quite a lot. So when I look at um, people in the business that are using the product, we've got quite a variety and a mix of people. We've got people that have general IT literacy skills where they're absolutely fine with creating processes um, straight out of the box. Not really too much of an issue. Um, up to other guys that are quite enthused and quite technically savvy and keen to learn, keen to play, and have extended it and used some of the... Um, features available in, in Flowforma to communicate via API to other systems. But as a rule, no, I mean, that was part of our key criteria, really, for choosing Flowforma was something that would interface with the business and be adopted by the business and not require particularly heavy technical skills, which is where we would have a bottleneck with some of the other products we looked at. Thank you very much. 
don't forget you can still ask questions via the Q&A widget in the top left-hand corner of your screen. I have a question for you, Paul. We have Office 365. Yeah. Is onboarding the flow from a product automation tool simple? Yeah, uh, you can install Fulforma via the Microsoft App Source. Basically, just install it as an app in your SharePoint environment. Um, so it's a very straightforward installation procedure. And then when on every Fulforma sale, we um, uh, recommend a, a program called SureStart. And basically, we will bring you through or train you through the implementation of a, a single process in your organization. So we'll, we'll guide you through the automation of that first process. And what we find is that this gets everybody off to a great start because you're, they're getting immediate results. And um, you're getting that process live in a very short time frame and you're straight away getting benefit out of the system. And um, so, yeah, we have a very structured onboarding uh, uh, process for our new clients that's uh, proven to be very successful. Um, so we recommend that sure start approach. Thank you very much. I have a question for you, James. Did you trial a few different process automation tools? Yeah, we certainly did. Um, to be fair, we probably took about eight or nine months to actually finalize um, which product we go for being Flowforma. Um, and we had quite a detailed level of complexity of what we were looking for. Um, and it was really about removing the, the kind of necessity to have IT involved all the time. We looked at the likes of K2 and Nintax, which, you know, in their own rights were good products, but most of the um, solutions we looked at still had a heavy reliance upon IT, and we're quite a small, constrained team, so I was quite keen that, um, you know, whatever solutions we looked at were basically something that could be driven and owned by the business as opposed to IT. So, yes, we, we did look at a number over that period of time. Thank you very much. Thanks for the great presentation, Paul and James. To find out more, you can download the A14 case study and lots more resources from the resources panel here or by visiting flowformer.com. If you'd like a one-to-one -one demo or a trial of Flowformer process automation, just let us know in the post-webinar survey. So again, that just leaves me to thank James and Paul for what was a great presentation and to Flowformer for sponsoring this session. To the attendees, you'll receive an email shortly telling you how you can access the on-demand version of this webinar, or you can access this through our website, which is www.business-review-webinars.com. We look forward to sharing further webinars with you, so please do keep an eye out on the website just mentioned, and follow us on Twitter at BRWebinars for daily updates, and join our LinkedIn group, Business Review Webinars. Thank you once again, and I hope you all have a nice day.